Okay, sorry if that video cut you off, but so we're testing that synthetic division um, right here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and continue that on. That becomes negative two, it's negative 13. I guess it would help if that was a two, 13, 15, negative 15, negative 59, positive 59. And as you can see, that's a 35, but we are no longer testing if this is a zero. What we're testing here on that formal definition page, you can see. If I test the my negative one and all of these return what we call alternating signs. So here this was positive, this became negative, this is positive, it became negative, and this was positive. And so it went from a non-negative number to a as a <laughs> to a negative number, sorry. So we're alternating those signs. This is what we call our lower bound. So that's proof that this is true, the lower bound. And we would do the exact same thing with our upper bound. And so we go ahead and do positive seven. And instead of getting alternating signs, we want to get all non-negative numbers. And so that should get, you know, all technically what we call all positive values, but zero is not a neither positive or negative. So that's why we call it non-negative value. So I'm going to go ahead and do this synthetic division. That's 14. That becomes 3. That becomes 21, 23, uh, 161, 117, 819, and 795. So again, we're not checking if this is a zero. We're just checking that these are all non-negative, and they are. So this must be our upper bound. Okay, so that was just proof that those were our bounds. And so how does that help us? Well, it narrows down our list. So if I know those are our bounds, I go ahead and check for my possible zeros. Remember, that's that uh, factors of my constant over factors of my coefficient. So I did factors of 24 over factors of 2, and I found all of these factors. But we can narrow that down because we actually have an interval. So I went ahead and pulled out just the values that fall between negative 1 and 7. And I would test all of those values. However, again, to narrow down our time, I went ahead and checked it in a graphing calculator. And negative one, we've already tested, but we're going to test negative one half and six because those look like the only ones that are kind of connecting at that graph. But the point of testing it, even though I look at it on the graphing calculator, is to make sure that that's not an irrational number, but it is a rational zero. So I go ahead and use synthetic substitution to prove that. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in that root at negative, or sorry, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and test six. I'm not going to use that fraction just yet, just to make my life easier. And I bring down all of my original coefficients, negative 24, and I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, substitution. This is one, this is six, that's eight, that's 48. That becomes four. Four, that becomes 24, so that's zero. And now we're checking that that's a true zero. So yes, uh, this root is a real rational zero. But instead of testing on the original polynomial, now I can test on the depressed polynomial. And that becomes plus 8x plus 4. So I'm going to test on this polynomial down here. And again, because I... No, I'm on a depressed polynomial. I don't have that extra box over here. So I'm going to go ahead and test negative one half. And what were our values for that up top? It was two, one, eight, and four. So I can bring down that two. That becomes a negative one. That becomes zero. That's still zero. That becomes eight. That's negative four. And that zeroes out. So we're good to go. Again, here's my newest depressed polynomial. This was x cubed. This is now two x squared plus uh just plus eight. And so this down here, now we're at a quadratic, we're good to go, we're good to check that out. But um, I, all, I have all three of them, so I'm good to go. Now I know that there is, these are our possible rational zeros on the upper lower bounds from negative one to positive seven. And I already knew negative one didn't, uh, didn't quite work because I already, we already tested it. We tested the lower bound, it proved it was a lower bound, but it proved also that it wasn't a true rational zero. Okay, and just our closure piece real quick, just to kind of wrap up. Just remember, we talked about leading coefficients equal to one. You can use direct substitution. That means plug in your factors. You can also use synthetic substitution, which is our division. And again, where do those factors come from? Those come from the constant term, technically the x to the zeroth term. The other thing we talked about was leading coefficients not equal to one. For this, you have to use the rational zero theorem for your possible factors. That was your possible factors. Uh, that was your fraction where it was the factors of your constant divided by the factors of your coefficients. 
coefficient. You test all of them, um, but remember you can always like use logical sequencing, your larger factors maybe probably you won't use, and also you can start using the depressed polynomials because you're trying to get down to x squared. Uh, again, the depressed polynomial, what is that? That's that, you know, that polynomial that's lost in x. That's the quotient, the last line of your synthetic division. And finally, we talked about upper and lower bounds. And remember, it is a lower bound when your last line alternates sign. It is an upper bound when your last line are all non-negative. So all positive, as y'all are kind of used to calling it. Okay, and that's it for our video. We are good to go, and I'll see y'all with our final video 2.5 on inequalities.